This video was made in collaboration with Narutopedia. If you'd like to learn more, check out the link in the description. Madara Uchiha was the legendary leader of the Uchiha clan. He founded Konohagakure alongside his childhood friend and rival, Hashirama Senju, with the intention of beginning an era of peace. When the two couldn't agree on how to achieve that peace, they fought for control of the village, a conflict which ended in Madara's death. Madara, however, rewrote his death and went into hiding to work on his own plans. Unable to complete it in his natural life, he entrusted his knowledge and plans to Obito Uchiha shortly before his actual death. Years later, Madara would be revived, only to see his plans foiled and ultimately and finally realizing the error of his ways and making amends with Hashirama before his final death. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Madara Uchiha. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Madara was born during the Warring States period and was the eldest of Tajima Uchiha's five sons. Madara and his brothers grew up on the battlefield waging constant war with the Uchiha's rivals, the Senju. Three of his brothers died young, leaving Madara with only his younger brother Izuna. Madara and Izuna became very close through their shared loss and constantly competed with each other to get stronger. This, combined with his naturally strong chakra, enabled the young Madara to defeat adult Senju in battle and develop a reputation as a genius. During his infrequent downtime, Madara met a boy his own age named Hashirama. The two quickly developed a friendly rivalry, be it skipping stones or urinating in rivers. Like Madara, Hashirama was also a shinobi who had lost his brothers on the battlefield. Together, they imagined a world where children like themselves wouldn't need to fight. As a precaution, Madara and Hashirama did not divulge their family names, but nevertheless discovered each other's identities. Madara was an Uchiha, Hashirama was a Senju. It was their duty to kill each other, even if they were friends. Needing to choose between his family and his dreams of peace, Madara chose to end his friendship with Hashirama so he would have no reservations over killing him in the future, a resolve strong enough to awaken his Sharingan. Over the following years, Madara and Hashirama continued to meet in combat. Madara could never defeat Hashirama, even after acquiring a Mangekyo Sharingan. And Hashirama could never bring himself to kill someone he still considered a friend, resulting in a constant stalemate between the two that lasted decades. In time, both Madara and Hashirama became leaders of their respective clans, a position Hashirama tried to use to broker peace between them. Although some Uchiha found the offer increasingly tempting, Madara refused due to Izuna's death at the hands of Hashirama's own brother, Tobirama. Despite this, some Uchiha defected over to the Senju clan out of self-preservation. Madara then used Izuna's eyes in order to gain eternal Mangekyo Sharingan and restore his deteriorating vision. With this new power, he waged one final assault against the Senju and was summarily defeated. Rather than kill Madara to bring the era of war to an end, Hashirama offered to kill himself if it would stop the fighting. Madara was moved by Hashirama's gesture and finally assented to peace. The Senju, the Uchiha, and all of their affiliated clans came together to found a village of peace where children would never need to die in battle. Madara and Hashirama rekindled their childhood friendship and Madara called that village Konohagakure, seeing it through leaves. But Madara's idea of peace differed from Hashirama's. Where Hashirama envisioned cooperation with the other newly formed villages, Madara desired control so the peace could never be lost. Evidenced by his attacking of Iwagakure's Mu and Onoki so that they would submit to Konoha's authority. When Hashirama was elected as Hokage, Konoha's leader, Madara also became concerned for the Uchiha's future, believing this to be but the first step in the Senju's dominance. The stone tablet had been in the Uchiha's possession for generations and was brought with them when they settled in Konoha. Through careful study, Madara was able to decipher enough of it to learn of the history of Shinobi, of the endless cycle of failed peace, and the destiny of battle between Uchiha and Senju, but also a means of unity for the world. With this knowledge, Madara decided Konoha was a failed experiment. He tried to convince his own clan and even Hashirama of the same conclusion, but none would hear him. Madara chose to abandon the village, returning with the nine-tailed demon fox under his control to challenge Hashirama. They fought to exhaustion, and from the carnage of their battle, the Valley of the End was formed. In the end, Madara was killed by Hashirama. News of Madara's death spread fast and his corpse was secretly hidden to keep anyone from finding it and profiting from it. But Madara had planned ahead. 
He had scheduled an Izanagi to activate sometime after his death, changing reality to bring him back to life in exchange for his right eye's vision. He left a copy in his place of his real body, and went into hiding with a special trophy from his fight with Hashirama, a mouthful of Hashirama's flesh that he transplanted into his wounds. It was not until decades later, towards the end of Madara's natural life, that the cells had any effect, awakening the Rinnegan, in the process of restoring his right eye. With the Rinnegan, he was able to summon the demonic statue of the Outer Path, which he used to cultivate a mindless living clone of Hashirama from which he believed he had produced a white Zetsu army. Over the years, Madara had perfected his plans for peace in what he called the Eye of the Moon plan. But as his years waned, Madara knew he couldn't complete his plans in the time he had left. So he transplanted his Rinnegan into a young Nagato without the boys knowing, intending Nagato to someday use the eyes to restore Madara to life. If Nagato was to do that, however, Madara would need an agent to act on his behalf and guide Nagato towards this ultimate goal. So Madara waited, connecting himself to the demonic statue to keep him alive until someone could be found. Madara spent this time keeping a close eye on Konoha to find a suitable pawn to take his place. During the Third Shinobi War, Madara found a badly injured Obito Uchiha. Madara used Hashirama's cells to replace Obito's damaged extremities and placed a forbidden individual curse tag in Obito's heart as a failsafe in case Obito ever turned against him. Until then, Madara began working towards corrupting Obito. He had Kirigakure kidnap the girl Obito loved, Rin Nohara and seal the three tails into her. He then manipulated events so that Rin would die at the hands of Obito's friend, Kakashi, while Obito watched. Driven to despair, Obito offered his services to Madara. Madara divulged to Obito the history of the Sage of the Six Paths and the Ten Tails, the details of his Eye of the Moon plan, and various techniques that Obito would need moving forward. As a final act, he left behind Black Setsu, what he believed to be a manifestation of his will, to provide additional guidance to Obito in pursuit of this goal. With that, Madara disconnected from the demonic statue, and with his dying breath, entrusted Obito with his name, Madara Uchiha. Toby, or Obito, acting under Madara's name, moves into the final stages of the Eye of the Moon plan by initiating a fourth shinobi world war. Before the wars start, Kabuto Yakushi approaches Toby to try and form an alliance. When Toby asks what will happen if he refuses, Kabuto resurrects Madara to show he knows that Toby is not the true Madara and forces him to accept. Toby reluctantly agrees, and Kabuto de-summons Madara. The Fourth Shinobi World War Climax during the Fourth Shinobi World War, Kabuto decides to use Madara against the allied shinobi forces and uses Mu as a medium to summon him to the battlefield. When he first becomes aware of his surroundings, Madara believes he has been brought back by Nagato's outer path, Samsara of Heavenly Life technique, but soon realizes that he instead has been brought back with the impure world reincarnation. Kabuto speaks through Mu, introduces himself, and explains recent developments in the world and Tobi's current actions. After Kabuto points out that he has restored Madara to his state beyond his prime, Madara tests his body by tearing through the 4th Division, thinning its numbers. The 4th Division's initial attempts to stop Madara fail as he protects himself with Susanoo. With the 5th Kazakage, 3rd Tsuchikage, and one of Naruto Uzumaki's Shadow Clones combined efforts, Madara is forced to activate his Renegon and absorb the attack. Realizing his enemies were too dangerous for him to hold back with ninjutsu and taijutsu, Madara pulls down a meteorite from the atmosphere. When the Kazakage and Tsuchikage successfully stop it, Madara adds a second meteorite to his attack, both of which fall upon and devastate the 4th Division. With most of the 4th Division dead, Madara questions Kabuto about just how far off plan Tobi has gone. Because Kabuto doesn't actually know much about the plan, Madara is left to check things for himself and tries to summon the Nine Tails, only to discover that it's sealed in a Jinchuriki, specifically Naruto. Despite knowing the current Naruto was a clone, he decided to delay his plans to test out his new powers, namely the wood release Nativity of Trees, which Naruto's clone barely countered. He then moves in to finish off the remainder of the 4th Division, but is repelled by the arrival of the 5th Hokage, the 5th Mizukage, and the 5th Raikage. The 5 Kage combine forces against Madara and propel him from the immediate area. By the time Madara returns, Naruto's Shadow Clone is gone and the 5 Kage remain his only opponents. 
They battle for some time, with Madara equaling and besting the Kage's efforts. When he's hit with the Suchikage's dust release detachment of the primitive world technique, Madara's armor is torn away, revealing the implant of Hashirama's face on his chest. <laughs> what? <laughs> Madara laments Hashirama's legacy that these Kage have inherited, having been completely unimpressed by their attacks, particularly those of the Hokage, Hashirama's granddaughter. Madara then creates 25 copies of himself and has them each activate their Susanoo. By nightfall, the Kage are still alive and are able to pool their efforts so successfully that he is nearly sealed. Finally impressed by their display, Madara responds by summoning his perfected Susanoo. Before he can use it to kill the Kage, his Susanoo starts to fade and Madara is engulfed in light. Madara realizes that Kabuto has elsewhere released him from the impure world reincarnation and his soul is returning to the afterlife. Madara responds by performing the hand seals to rescind the impure world reincarnation contract that Kabuto has over him, enabling him to return to his immortal body without further interference from a summoner. Now able to do whatever he likes and bored by the Kage, Madara decides to go find Naruto and reclaim the Nine Tails. The Kage, rightfully so, try to block his escape. Uh, probably to uh, no avail. After defeating the five Kage, Madara finds and reunites with Obito while he's engaged in combat with Naruto, Killer B, Kakashi, and Might Guy. Madara notices the demonic statue undergoing a premature transformation into the Ten Tails and scolds Obito for being too hasty. After Obito returns Madara's gunbai, Madara creates a wood dragon in an attempt to capture Naruto and Killer B and complete the Ten Tails. He at one point manages to restrain and drain B of his energy, but is overwhelmed by Guy's daytime tiger. The Ten Tails is revived before he can recover, forcing Madara to make do. He and Obito leap onto the Ten Tails' head and connect themselves to it, granting them control of its actions. Their four opponents put up a resistance but are no match for the Ten Tails' power. However, before the Ten Tails can finish them off, the combined allied shinobi forces arrive to join the fight, deflecting the Ten Tails' attack. The allies join forces to immobilize the Ten Tails, making it an easy target. The Ten Tails undergoes a new transformation before their attacks can connect, freeing it and letting it block the incoming attacks. Though the immediate problem is solved, Madara realizes there's another issue. The allies are being coordinated too effectively. He and Obito direct the Ten Tails to attack the distant ally HQ, something that takes several tailed beast balls due to their lack of control, which Madara attributes to Obito's failure to revive him correctly. Yeah, Obito, you failure. Although the allies' quote-unquote brain is killed, the allies are given one final battle plan in the time it takes the Ten Tails to hit its target. Obito and Madara try to thin the allies' numbers before they can get into position and, when that fails, block against the oncoming attack, but the combined forces manage to break through and separate Obito and Madara from the Ten Tails. With the Ten Tails now out of their control, they must fight the alliance directly. Obito eventually disappears to the other dimension, forcing Madara to fend for himself. During Obito's absence, Madara senses that Hashirama has elsewhere been brought back to life. Excited at the prospect of fighting his rival again, Madara eagerly awaits his rival. When Hashirama eventually arrives, Hashirama sends only a wood clone to face him, being too busy restraining the Ten Tails. Yo, I love how Hashirama's like, you're not worth my time, here's a, here's a sculpture of myself to fight against. You know how like pissed Madara must have been? <laughs> oh my god. Madara decides to sit out of the fight until the real Hashirama is ready. When the wood clone persists, Madara easily defeats it. He later senses Obito's return to the battlefield and decides to make use of one of his failsafes, activating black receivers planted in Obito to force him to finally revive Madara. Obito resists and instead seals the Ten Tails into himself. Though he's frustrated by this setback, Hashirama is no longer preoccupied, so Madara forces him into a fight. As their battle rages, Hashirama tries to convince Madara to postpone, but Madara repeatedly refuses. Nevertheless, he keeps track of Obito's progress and growing control of the Ten Tails' power. After Obito's defeat, Madara is restrained by Hashirama's wood dragons and the alliance moves in to seal him. With Obito no longer the Ten Tails' Jinchuriki, Madara puts another failsafe into effect. Black Zetsu. 
Having been in contact with it since his initial reincarnation, Madara orders Black Zetsu to take control of Obuto's body and use the Outer Path Samsara of Heavenly Life technique. Restored to life, Madara is able to make use of his modified body's full power, to which he breaks free of his restraints. Having died with his real eyes intact and removed from his body, Madara's reincarnated eyes crumble to nothing. Sasuke attempts to burn Madara with Amaterasu, while Naruto reminds Sasuke that Madara can absorb ninjutsu. Madara, however, had to discard his armor that was burnt by the flames. To compensate for his blindness, he immobilizes Hashirama with black receivers and absorbs his senjutsu chakra, enhancing his sensory skills enough to perceive his enemies and their attacks without the need of sight. He is once again attacked by Sasuke, but instructs Sasuke to stay out of his way since he doesn't want to kill his own clansmen. Madara goes after the freed tail beast so that he can revive the ten tails once more. He attempts to take on all nine at once, failing and losing his right arm in the process. While he regroups, a white Zetsu clone brings him one of the Rinnegan that Obito kept in storage. Madara takes this and one of the Zetsu's arms, allowing him to start round two. He summons the demonic statue from Obito's body and uses Limbo, Border Jail, to repel the nine beasts. Before they can recover, he seals all of them into the demonic statue, including those sealed in Naruto and B. While the statue undergoes its transformation into the Tentails again, Madara asks the Zetsu clone how Black Zetsu is faring with taking his remaining Rinnegan back from Obito. Tobirama Senju, having been reincarnated alongside Hashirama, attacks Madara immediately afterwards, but is restrained after failing to deal any damage. Sasuke also attacks Madara, but is immobilized in mid-air. Having already warned Sasuke once, Madara turns Sasuke's own sword against him and stabs him in the chest. With nobody left to oppose him, Madara seals the Ten Tails into himself once the resurrection is complete. Pleased with himself, Madara sets off to regain his other Rinnegan. Along the way, he spits out the Benihisago and Kohaku no Johei, both of which were used by Obito as part of his premature revival method. Madara tries to reason with Obito, reminding him of all they planned and insisting on the impending effectiveness of the Eye of the Moon plan. Rather than be convinced, Obito stabs Madara and manages to steal fragments of the One Tails and Eight Tails chakra from him before using Kamui to escape with Naruto. Yo, this dude was just like, fuck your plan, gotcha! <laughs> While Madara contemplates his next move, he is confronted by Might Guy, a master of Taijutsu, which is one of the only effective attacks against Madara in his new form. Guy opens all eight gates and hits Madara with the Evening Elephant. Madara is taken by surprise and tries to defend himself, but other allied shinobi are able to reduce him to a single truth-seeking ball, leaving him wide open. Madara is thrilled at the prospect of such a challenging fight and is visibly battered, but not beaten, forcing Guy to use Night Guy. Madara is nearly killed by the attack, which obliterates the entire left side of his body. Thanking Guy for giving him such an entertaining battle and acknowledging him as a worthy opponent, Madara decides to show him the ultimate respect by killing him instead of letting him succumb to his injuries. However, the truth-seeking ball that Madara launches at Guy is kicked back at him by a revived Naruto, who Madara notes has somehow gained power similar to his own. Naruto sends Madara crashing through the recreation of the Tentails in its giant tree form, a remnant of Obito's earlier battle. A voice speaks to Madara, telling him to absorb it. Madara does so and becomes stronger, but is met with a new problem. Sasuke, also healed from his injuries, has joined forces with Naruto and is also in possession of new abilities. Despite Madara's efforts, he can do nothing against them. Knowing he needs his other Rinnegan if he's to end the fight, Madara steals Kakashi's Mangekyo Sharingan and uses it to go after Obito. He stops Sakura from destroying the Rinnegan, to which Obito responds by sending her back to the real world before Madara can kill her. However, Obito himself is too weak to fight back. To give Obito some final words, Madara first congratulates him for removing the forbidden individual curse tag he had placed on him. He also reveals his role in the death of Rin, in doing so admitting that he's been manipulating Obito from the start. With that, Madara takes back his Rinnegan, returning to Obito his left Mangekyo Sharingan. Black Setsu uses Obito's body to perform Kamui and return them to the real world. Naruto and Sasuke move to attack him as soon as Madara appears, so Madara delays them with multiple Chibaku's Tensei. 
Madara gains proximity to the moon, awakening the Rinne Sharingan in the process and succeeds in casting the infinite Tsukuyomi. Kaguya Otsutsuki strikes. The entire world is trapped in a dream and then wrapped into Madara's god nativity of a world of trees. Sasuke is able to save Naruto, Kakashi, and Sakura from the infinite Tsukuyomi. Seeing them, Madara announces himself the world's savior, one who has saved the world from itself by replacing the hells of reality with the heavens of dreams. While he's proclaiming his victory, Black Zetsu stabs him in the back. <laughs> oh my god, yo, Black Zetsu. There's so much backstabbing in the show. Black Zetsu reveals that it is not Madara's will, but Kaguya Otsutsuki's, and that he has taken advantage of him in order to bring about her revival. Black Zetsu transfers from Obito's body to Madara's, completely covering him and forcing him to start absorbing the chakra of those trapped in the infinite Tsukuyomi. After dramatically increasing in size, Madara shrinks down until the revived Kaguya is revealed in his stead. Naruto and Sasuke eventually seal Kaguya in her own dimension, along with Black Setsu, at which point she reverts into the Tentails and spits out Madara. The Sage of the Six Paths summons Madara and everyone else back to the real world, but he can do nothing to save Madara from his approaching death as a result of having both the Tail Beasts and Demonic Statue removed from his body. Madara uses his remaining time speaking to Hashirama, noting that his own dream for peace has died while Hashirama's lives on, and therefore was apparently the better of the two. Hashirama replies that they are still friends despite everything, to which Madara agrees as he dies. Did you enjoy the video? Be sure to tell us in the comments. And make sure to subscribe. And check out these other great videos from the Amagi. If you'd like to support me, you can also subscribe to my personal channel. See you guys tomorrow!